As I walk through the valley where I harvest my grain, I take a look at my wife and realize she's very plain. But that's just perfect for an Amish like me. You know I shun fancy things like electricity. These lyrics from Amish Paradise, Weird Al Yankovic's 1996 parody of Coolio's Gangsta's Paradise, showcase the comedic genius that has made him a household name for over four decades. With his clever wordplay and ability to transform hit songs into hilarious masterpieces, Weird Al has become the undisputed king of parody music. But not everyone has been a fan of his humorous take on popular tunes. In this look at Weird Al's incredible career, we'll explore the many facets of his talent and the impact he's had on the music industry. From his early days as an accordion-playing teenager to his rise as a Grammy-winning, platinum-selling artist, we'll plunge into the stories behind some of his most iconic parodies and examine how they've become an integral part of pop culture history. But Weird Al's journey hasn't been without its controversies. We'll take a closer look at the supposed beef between Weird Al and Coolio over Amish Paradise, a parody that sparked a heated debate about the role of satire in music. This infamous incident showcases the challenges Weird Al has faced in his career, from gaining acceptance in the industry to navigating creative differences with other artists. Throughout the video, we'll also explore how Weird Al's work has served as a bridge between generations, introducing younger audiences to classic songs while providing a nostalgic trip down memory lane for older fans. So grab your accordion and get ready to laugh, sing, and think as we set out on a wild and hilarious journey through the life and times of Weird Al Yankovic. Whether you're a die-hard fan or a newcomer to his unique brand of comedy, this is an entertaining and inspiring look at one of the most beloved figures in music history. Get ready to experience the weird and wonderful world of the man who dared to ask, what if Beat It was actually about food? Early life and career beginnings. Gosh, it started when I was just a little fetus, David. It was many, many years ago, you know, and when the Earth's crust was still warm, I guess. I guess about 14 or 15, just a regular teenager making up songs in the car as uh, my folks drove me around, and I guess I just never grew up. It's something I've always done. Alfred Matthew Yankovic, known to the world as Weird Al, was born October 23, 1959, in Downey, California, though he was raised in nearby Linwood, California. From a young age, it was clear that Al was destined for a life in the spotlight. His parents, Nick and Mary Yankovic, recognized their son's prodigious talent and encouraged him to pursue his passions, enrolling him in accordion lessons at the age of seven. This decision proved a defining moment in Al's life, setting him on the path to becoming one of the most celebrated comedy musicians of all time. Growing up, Al was shy and an intelligent child who often felt like an outsider among his peers. He found solace in the world of comedy and music, devouring the works of artists like Alan Sherman, Spike Jones, and Tom Lehrer, who specialized in humorous songs and parodies. Al was also heavily influenced by the irreverent humor of Monty Python and the satirical radio show The Dr. Demento Show, which introduced him to a wide range of comedy and novelty music. The people that inspired me from the show were people like Spike Jones, Alan Sherman, Stan Freeberg, Tom Lehrer, people like that. Uh, and that really exposed me to a lot of things I'd never heard before. And, and that's what inspired me to start sending in tapes and to t continue doing the kind of music that I do today. As a teenager, Al channeled his love of comedy into his own creative pursuits. He wrote humorous articles for his high school newspaper, participated in talent shows, and honed his accordion skills, often performing polka versions of popular rock songs. Despite his shy demeanor, Al's wit and musical abilities quickly earned him a reputation as a gifted entertainer, and he began to dream of a career in showbiz. After graduating as valedictorian of his high school class in 1976, Al enrolled at the California Polytechnic State University, where he studied architecture. But his true passion remained music and comedy. While working as a DJ at the university's radio station, KCPR, Al began to incorporate comedy bits and parody songs into his shows, showcasing his unique blend of humor and musical talent. It was during this time that Al recorded his first official parody, a send-up of the Knack's hit song My Sharona, titled My Bologna. 
Recorded in the campus bathrooms for their optimal acoustics, the song quickly caught the attention of Dr. Demento, who played it on his nationally syndicated radio show. The positive response to My Bologna was overwhelming, and it helped to launch Al's career as a professional comedy musician. With the success of My Bologna, Al began to explore other opportunities in the music industry. He landed a six-month recording contract with Capitol Records, and in 1983, he released his self-titled debut album, Weird Al Yankovic. The album featured a mix of parodies and original comedy songs, showcasing Al's versatility as a songwriter and performer. Standout tracks included Another One Rides the Bus, a spoof of Queen's Another One Bites the Dust, and Ricky, a parody of Tony Basil's Mickey, which helped to establish Al as a fresh and exciting voice in comedy music. As Al's popularity grew, so did his ambition. He began to set his sights on conquering the world of pop music, and in 1984, he released his sophomore album, Weird Al Yankovic, in 3D. The album's lead single, Eat It, a parody of Michael Jackson's Beat It, became an instant classic, thanks in part to its hilarious music video, which parodied the original's choreography and style. Eat It reached number 12 on the Billboard Hot 100 chart, cementing Al's status as a legitimate force in the music industry. Well, food has always been very inspirational because uh, I eat food two, three times a day, and you know, it's, it's kept me alive for many years, and it's just my small way of paying food back for my entire life. Throughout the 1980s, Al continued to release successful albums and parodies targeting some of the biggest names in music. He tackled artists like Madonna, Like a Surgeon, Cyndi Lauper, Girls Just Want to Have Lunch, and James Brown, Living with a Hernia, always managing to put his own unique spin on their signature sounds. He also began to explore other avenues for his talent, co-writing and starring in the 1985 mockumentary The Complete Al and making appearances on popular television shows like The Transformers and Johnny Dangerously. By the end of the decade, Weird Al Yankovic had established himself as the premier comedy musician of his generation. With a loyal fan base, a string of hit albums and singles, and a reputation for pushing the boundaries of what was possible in the world of parody music, Al was poised for even greater success in the years to come. But as he would soon discover, with great success often comes great controversy and Al found himself at the center of some of the biggest debates in the music industry in the decades to come. The 80s, success cemented. Do you remember the first parody you ever did? That must have been uh, My Bologna. Back, uh, I, was still, I was 19 years old, and I couldn't afford to go into a recording studio, so I went into the bathroom across the hall from my college campus radio station, mm -hmm. and it just me and the accordion, and uh, we recorded it because the acoustic uh, tiles give a nice warm reverb sound, kind of a bathroom wall of sound. Yeah. Yeah. The 1980s were a pivotal decade for Weird Al, as he transformed from a beloved niche artist into a mainstream pop culture icon. With a string of hit albums, unforgettable music videos, and live performances that showcased his wit, creativity, and musical prowess, Al solidified his position as the king of parody music, beloved by fans around the world. One of the key factors in Al's success during this period was his ability to tap into the zeitgeist of the era. The 80s were a time of excess, experimentation, and iconoclasm in the world of popular music, with artists like Michael Jackson, Madonna, and Prince pushing the boundaries of what was possible in terms of sound, style, and spectacle. Al recognized the potential for parody in these larger-than-life figures and set about creating his own versions of their signature songs, infusing them with his trademark humor and clever wordplay. A prime example of this was Eat It, his 1984 parody of Michael Jackson's Beat It. The song, which features Al mimicking Jackson's vocal style and dance moves, became an instant classic upon its release, thanks in large part to its accompanying music video. Directed by Al himself, the video perfectly captured the absurdity of the original while also showcasing Al's unique comic sensibilities. The video received heavy rotation on MTV and helped to introduce Al to a whole new audience of fans. But Eat It was just the beginning of Al's 80s hot streak. Over the course of the decade, he released a string of beloved albums and singles, each one showcasing his evolving musical style and comedic voice. Dare to be Stupid, released in 1985, featured a mix of parodies and original songs, including the title track, a pitch-perfect pastiche of the new wave band Devo. 
The album also included Like a Surgeon, a parody of Madonna's Like a Virgin, which became one of Al's most enduring hits. In 1988, Al released Even Worse, his most successful album to date. The album featured Fat, a parody of Michael Jackson's Bad, that once again showcased Al's uncanny ability to mimic the king of pop's vocal style and dance moves. The song's music video, which featured Al donning a fat suit and rampaging through a subway station, won the Grammy Award for Best Concept Music Video and cemented Al's status as a true innovator in the field of musical comedy. Throughout the 80s, Al's success continued to grow thanks in large part to his tireless work ethic and his ability to adapt to the changing landscape of popular music. He toured relentlessly, playing sold-out shows across the country and earning a reputation as one of the most entertaining live performers in the business. He also began to explore other avenues for his talent, making guest appearances on popular TV shows like The Simpsons and Saturday Night Live, and even starring in his own feature film, the cult classic UHF. But perhaps the most significant aspect of Al's success during this period Deadly. George, I'm not so sure about this. Was the way in which he managed to bridge the gap between different generations of music fans. By parodying the biggest hits of the era, Al introduced younger listeners to the classic songs and artists that had inspired him, while also providing a nostalgic trip down memory lane for older fans. In doing so, he helped to create a shared cultural language that transcended age, race, and gender, uniting people through the power of laughter and music. As the 80s drew to a close, Weird Al Yankovic stood at the pinnacle of his profession, a true icon of comedy and music. But as he would soon discover, the road ahead would not be without its challenges. In the decades to come, Al would face creative differences, personal tragedies, and a rapidly changing music industry that threatened to leave him behind. But through it all, he would remain true to his vision, his humor, and his fans, cementing his place as one of the most enduring and beloved figures in the history of entertainment. The 90s. Should I call you Al or Weird Al or Senor Yankovic or... Uh... You know, actually, that, I... that question's kind of moot at this point because I've decided to change my name. Oh. Uh, from now on, I'd like to be called this. As Weird Al Yankovic stepped into the 90s, he found himself riding a wave of success that had been steadily building throughout the previous decade. With a string of best-selling albums, sold-out tours, and a growing legion of devoted fans, Al had firmly established himself as the preeminent parody artist of his generation. But far from resting on his laurels, the 90s saw Al continue to push the envelope of his craft, releasing some of his most memorable and enduring works to date. One of the defining moments of Al's 90s input came with the release of his 1992 album Off the Deep End, which featured the instant classic Smells Like Nirvana, a hilarious send-up of Nirvana's grunge anthem Smells Like Teen Spirit. The song, which poked fun at the band's often unintelligible lyrics and grungy image, was accompanied by a music video that perfectly mimicked the style and atmosphere of the original, cementing Al's reputation as a master satirist. But Smells Like Nirvana was just the tip of the iceberg when it came to Al's 90s success. Over the course of the decade, he released a string of hit albums and singles, each one showcasing his evolving musical style and comedic sensibilities. Alapalooza, released in 1993, featured the hit single Bedrock Anthem, a clever mashup of the Red Hot Chili Peppers Under the Bridge and Give It Away that playfully satirized the band's funk rock sound. The album also included memorable parodies of songs by Aerosmith, Billy Ray Cyrus, and Deep Purple, among others. In 1996, Al released what would become one of his most successful and enduring albums to date, Bad Hair Day. The album's lead single, Amish Paradise, a parody of Coolio's gangster rap hit Gangsta's Paradise, would go on to become one of Al's most iconic and enduring parodies, further solidifying his status as a true innovator. But it also proved to be one of his more controversial songs. More on that in a moment. Throughout the remainder of the 90s, Al continued to tour extensively, playing to sold-out crowds around the world and earning a reputation as one of the most dynamic and entertaining live performers in the business. He also remained a fixture on television, making guest appearances on popular shows like The Simpsons, Friends, and The Drew Carey Show, and even hosting his own ABC Saturday morning show, The Weird Al Show, which ran for one season in 1997. 
As the decade wrapped up, Al showed no signs of slowing down. In 1999, he released his 10th studio album, Running With Scissors, which featured the hit single Pretty Fly For A Rabbi, a parody of The Offspring's Pretty Fly For A White Guy. The album also included memorable parodies of songs by Don McLean, Puff Daddy, and Bare Naked Ladies, among others. The Coolio Controversy Permission. Do you have to get permission from all of the people you spoof, like Madonna or sure. Michael? Yeah, yeah, we do go to uh, all the original writers uh, beforehand and give them the ideas and get their feelings on it. We don't want to step on anybody's toes. In 1996, Weird Al Yankovic found himself at the center of a heated controversy surrounding his parody of Coolio's rap hit, Gangsta's Paradise. Chin up the buggy, churn in lots of butter, raise the barn on Monday, soon I'll raise another. The parody, Amish Paradise, was featured on Bad Hair Day and quickly became a fan favorite thanks to its catchy melody, clever lyrics, and playful music video. But not everyone was amused by Al's send-up of the song, least of all, Coolio himself. According to Coolio, he had not given Al permission to parody Gangsta's Paradise and felt that the song trivialized the serious subject matter of the original. In an interview with the Associated Press, Coolio stated, quote, I think that my song was too serious. It ain't like it was beat it or eat it. Gangsta's Paradise represented something more than that. And I really, honestly and truly, don't appreciate him desecrating the song like that. For his part, Al maintained that he had obtained permission to parody the song through Coolio's record label, Tommy Boy Records. In a statement released to the press, Al said, quote, I had been told by my record label that Coolio had given his permission for me to do the parody. I later found out that Coolio had never heard the song before it came out, and he was not happy with it. The controversy surrounding Amish Paradise sparked a larger debate about the ethics of parody and the role of satire in popular music. While some critics argued that Al had gone too far in his send-up of Coolio's song, others praised him for his biting wit and willingness to take on even the most serious and self-important artists in the industry. For Al, the controversy was nothing new. Throughout his career, he had faced criticism and backlash from artists who felt that his parodies were disrespectful or trivializing. However, Al had always maintained that his intention was never to mock or belittle the original artists, but rather to pay homage to their work while also poking fun at the absurdities of popular culture. All said and done, the controversy surrounding Amish Paradise did little to dull Al's success or popularity. The song became a massive hit, reaching number 53 on the Billboard Hot 100 chart and earning Al a new generation of fans who appreciated his irreverent take on the rap genre. And while Coolio may have initially been upset by the parody, he eventually came to embrace it. Artist Responses to Weird Al's Parodies told him, you know, hey, it's Weird Al Yankovic, and I, I would love to do a parody of Smells Like Teen Spirit. And, and his initial reaction was, oh, it, it's going to be a song about food, because a lot of my hits at that time were. Uh, and, uh, and I explained, well, no, it's a song about how nobody can understand your lyrics. And I think there's probably half a beat on the phone, and he's like, yeah, yeah, sounds like a funny idea. <laughs> Throughout his career, Weird Al Yankovic has parodied countless songs by some of the biggest names in music, from Michael Jackson and Madonna to Nirvana and Chameleonaire. While many artists have embraced Al's parodies as a sign of their own success and cultural impact, others have been less enthusiastic. One artist who was famously supportive of Al's parodies was Kurt Cobain, lead singer of Nirvana. When Al approached the band about parodying their hit song, Smells Like Teen Spirit, Cobain was thrilled at the idea. In a 1992 interview with Rolling Stone, Cobain said, quote, I was really flattered by it. I thought it was a great compliment. I liked the video, too. It was really funny. Similarly, when Al parodied Don McLean's classic song, American Pie, with his Star Wars-themed song, The Saga Begins, McLean was reportedly a big fan of the parody. In fact, he even performed the song with Al on stage in concert in 1999, much to the delight of fans. Other artists, however, have been less enthusiastic about Al's parodies. One notable example is Paul McCartney, who famously rejected Al's request to parody his song, Live and Let Die, with a vegetarian-themed song called Chicken Pot Pie. As a longtime vegetarian and animal rights activist, McCartney felt that the parody would be inappropriate and declined to give his permission. Now, can I get you anything else? Beef. What? 
I thought you and Linda were strict vegetarians. Okay, okay, beef coming up. Another artist who initially had mixed feelings about Al's parodies was rapper Eminem. While Eminem did give Al permission to parody his song Lose Yourself with the song Couch Potato, he reportedly refused to allow Al to create a music video for the parody, feeling it would be detrimental to his image. And of course, as we've covered, Coolio was not satisfied with Al's parody, but eventually came around. He even appeared on stage with Weird Al at the 1996 American Music Awards ceremony to present the award for Favorite Alternative Artist. Other artists who have been parodied by Al over the years include Lady Gaga, Pharrell Williams, and Iggy Azalea, among many others. While not all of these artists have spoken publicly about their feelings towards the parodies, it's clear Al's work has had a significant impact on popular culture and has helped to shape the way we think about music, humor, and satire. 2000s As the dawn of the new millennium broke, Weird Al Yankovic faced an entertainment landscape undergoing seismic shifts. The 2000s were a time of digital revolution, with the rise of online platforms transforming how music was consumed, shared, and even created. This era could have posed a significant challenge for many artists, but for Yankovic, it presented a unique set of opportunities to innovate and expand his already impressive career. The early 2000s saw Yankovic continuing to produce albums that resonated with both longtime fans and new listeners. His ability to parody contemporary hits and cultural phenomena remained unmatched, but it was his 2006 album, Straight Outta Linwood, that marked a significant milestone. The album featured White and Nerdy, a parody of Chameleonaire's Ryden, which became an instant hit. Its success was not just limited to audio, the music video went viral on YouTube, amassing millions of views. This was a clear indication of Yankovic's adaptability to the changing music industry, leveraging the power of the internet to reach a wider audience. White and Nerdy was more than just a song, it was a cultural moment that highlighted Yankovic's keen understanding of digital media's potential. The video's popularity on YouTube underscored the platform's role in shaping what could be considered mainstream entertainment. Yankovic's embrace of this new medium was not just about distribution, but also about creating content that was inherently shareable and suited to the tastes of an internet-savvy generation. The success of Straight Outta Linwood and the viral nature of White and Nerdy set the stage for Yankovic to explore new ways of engaging with his audience. He began to release singles and music videos directly online, recognizing the internet's ability to facilitate immediate and widespread distribution. This strategy allowed him to comment on current events and trends with a timeliness that traditional album cycles couldn't match. As the 21st century unfolded, Weird Al Yankovic seamlessly transitioned into the digital era, a period marked by significant shifts in the music industry's landscape. The advent of digital media and online distribution platforms revolutionized music consumption and sharing, presenting both challenges and opportunities for artists worldwide. Amidst this transformation, Yankovic's adaptability and innovative spirit shined brightly, allowing him to thrive and connect with a new generation of fans. The release of Straight Outta Linwood in 2006 was a pivotal moment in Yankovic's career, particularly with White and Nerdy. This song, alongside the viral music video, catapulted Yankovic into the digital limelight, amassing millions of views on YouTube and solidifying his relevance in the internet age. The, the internet levels the playing field, certainly. I mean, yeah. you know, if, if, if uh, you know, Beat It came out this year, there would be 12 million you know, parodies called Eat It. Right. Uh, so it makes it a little bit uh, harder to stand out, but also it's easy to get your, get your stuff out there. You don't have to be beholden to any executives. You there's no, no meeting at MTV where people are going, oh, I wonder if we should play this and put this in heavy rotation. In 2009, Yankovic embraced the digital music landscape even further with Internet Leaks, an EP that showcased his ability to swiftly respond to contemporary pop culture. The album included a parody of T.I.'s Whatever You Like, along with style parodies that paid homage to The Doors, Weezer, The White Stripes, and Queen. This digital release not only highlighted Yankovic's versatility and keen observational wit, but also his commitment to staying current in a rapidly evolving industry. The creation of Internet Leaks involved collaborations with notable musicians, including Ray Manzarek of The Doors for Craigslist, ensuring authenticity in Yankovic's tributes. 
This period also saw Yankovic expanding his digital footprint through viral videos and web content, collaborating with other online personalities and content creators, thereby reinforcing his status as an internet icon. Internet leaks became a critical and commercial success, charting at number 8 on the Billboard Top Comedy Albums and earning a Grammy nomination for Best Comedy Album at the 52nd Grammy Awards. Beyond music, Yankovic expanded his presence in other media formats. He made numerous guest appearances on television shows, including The Simpsons and 30 Rock, where his unique brand of humor and parody could reach different audiences. Yankovic's versatility as an entertainer was evident in these appearances, as he seamlessly blended with the worlds of these shows while maintaining his distinctive comedy style. Yankovic's live performances also evolved during the 2000s. His concerts were elaborate spectacles that featured costume changes, multimedia elements, and a level of production value that mirrored the theatricality of his music videos. These live shows were not just concerts, but immersive entertainment experiences that celebrated Yankovic's extensive catalog and his prowess as a performer. The 2000s were also a time when Yankovic's influence on pop culture and the music industry was increasingly recognized. He received several awards and nominations that acknowledged his contributions to music and entertainment, including Grammy nominations. These accolades were a testament to his enduring appeal and the respect he had earned from both his peers and the industry at large. As the decade came to a close, Weird Al Yankovic had not only adapted to the digital age, but had thrived in it. His ability to leverage new media, combined with his sharp wit and musical talent, ensured that he remained a relevant and beloved figure in a rapidly changing entertainment landscape. As he moved into the next decade, fans and newcomers alike waited eagerly to see how Weird Al would continue to evolve and entertain in the ever-changing world of music and media. The 2010s slowed down certainly over the years, but I still, you know, want to put myself out there and, and I, I, I don't do it to like stay relevant or whatever, but yeah. I, I just, you know, enjoy doing it. It's, yep. it's, it's uh, you know, I, I want to do stuff that, uh, that's fun and yeah. hopefully amuses other people as it, well. It does. The 2010s saw Weird Al Yankovic building on the success and momentum he had established in the previous decade. He continued to tour extensively, playing to sold-out crowds around the world and cementing his reputation as one of the most entertaining live performers in the business. His shows were a testament to his enduring popularity and the timeless appeal of his music and humor. In 2014, Al released his 14th studio album, Mandatory Fun, which would prove to be a landmark in his career. The album, which featured parodies of songs by artists like Pharrell Williams, Iggy Azalea, and Lord, debuted at number one on the Billboard 200 chart, making it the first comedy album to achieve this feat since 1963. The achievement was a testament to Al's ability to connect with audiences across multiple generations and his status as a true icon of American popular culture. Mandatory Fun was not only a commercial success, but also a critical triumph. The album received widespread acclaim from reviewers who praised its clever lyrics, catchy melodies, and pitch-perfect parodies. Many critics hailed it as a masterpiece of musical comedy and a testament to Al's enduring genius. The album went on to win the Grammy Award for Best Comedy Album, further cementing Al's status as one of the most acclaimed and respected comedians of his generation. In addition to his musical output, Al remained a prominent figure in the world of television and film throughout the 2010s. He made numerous guest appearances on popular shows like The Goldbergs, Gallivant, and Reno 911 and lent his voice to animated series like BoJack Horseman and Milo Murphy's Law. He also continued to create viral videos and web content, including the popular epic rap battles of history series in which he portrayed historical figures like Sir Isaac Newton and Nikola Tesla. One of the highlights of Al's career in the 2010s came in 2018, when he was awarded a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. The honor was a recognition of his immense contributions to the world of entertainment and his status as a beloved cultural icon. At the ceremony, Al was surrounded by fans, friends, and colleagues who had been inspired and entertained by his work over the decades. Recent Projects and Future Plans yeah, at the time, it was like, oh, this is a funny little video, and it went viral, and I'd, I'd play it in my live shows, and everybody's like, when's the movie coming out? And I'd say, 
it's just a gag, it's just a joke. Yeah, it's not but a then after nine years of that, I said, maybe we should do a movie. In recent years, Weird Al Yankovic has remained as prolific and creative as ever, constantly seeking out new outlets and avenues for his humor and music. One of his most notable recent projects was the 2022 biopic Weird, the Al Yankovic Story, which he co-wrote with director Eric Appel. The film, which starred Daniel Radcliffe as Al, told a fictionalized and exaggerated version of the comedian's life story, complete with all the absurdist humor and meta-commentary that fans have come to expect from his work. Weird, the Al Yankovic story was released to critical acclaim, with many reviewers praising its clever writing, pitch-perfect performances, and loving homage to Al's career. The film also helped to introduce Al's comedy to a new generation of fans who may not have been familiar with his earlier work. Its success highlighted Al's lasting charm and his knack for constantly pushing the limits of what can be achieved in the world of comedy and entertainment. In addition to his work on the biopic, Al has remained active in the world of music and television. In 2022, he embarked on his unfortunate return of the ridiculously self-indulgent, ill-advised Vanity Tour, a follow-up to his 2018 tour of the same name. This tour focused on the original, non-parody songs and deep cuts, providing a rare opportunity for fans to hear some of his lesser-known but equally hilarious material. The tour, which included 133 shows across North America, was a massive success, proving that Al still got that special sauce. Al's recent tour also featured a special performance at New York City's Carnegie Hall, marking his first ever appearance at the prestigious venue. This milestone event was a testament to his enduring popularity and the respect he's earned within the entertainment industry. Alongside his successful tour, Al has continued to make guest appearances on popular television shows and lend his voice to animated series. In 2020, he appeared as a contestant on the fourth season of the hit reality competition series The Masked Singer, performing as the Jester and making it to the seventh episode before being eliminated. He's also voiced characters on shows like Amphibia and American Dad, further cementing his status as a beloved figure in animation and comedy. Looking to the future, Al shows no signs of giving up steam or resting on his laurels. In recent interviews, he's hinted at the possibility of new music and projects on the horizon, always remaining coy about the specifics, but promising that he will continue to surprise and delight his fans. He's also expressed interest in exploring new avenues for his creativity, including writing for film and television and collaborating with other artists and entertainers. Whatever the future holds, one thing is certain. Weird Al Yankovic's place in the pantheon of comedy and music legends is secure. His impact on popular culture is immeasurable, and his ability to bring joy, laughter, and thought-provoking satire to generations of fans is a testament to his genius and his enduring appeal. As he continues to tour, create, and entertain well into his fifth decade in the entertainment industry, there's no doubt that Al will continue to push the envelope, break new ground, and cement his status as a true icon of the weird and wonderful. Now we'd love to hear from you. What's your favorite Weird Al song or parody? And which artist's response to being parodied by Weird Al surprised you the most? Let us know in the comment section below.